Welcome to North Georgia Now. Today, today is Friday. Today is the day before races in many, many areas of the country, from go-karting to drag strips to NASCAR. Now, we're going to talk a lot of racing today because my man, the coolest, the greatest, the hottest, Dan Elliott, hot. Can you believe I described him as hot? He's a hottie. <laughs> he's here. I know. Let me tell you why he's hot. He's been working on a track. Mm -hmm. He's so hot because he is so into dirt. He is so into moving stuff, getting stuff cleaned out, redoing what was known as Peach State Racetrack. Yes. It is a local track. Nick raced there a lot. Did Chad race there? We went one time and it was an absolute disaster. Uh huh. We stayed all day. Uh -huh. It was hot, hot, humid. Right, that's why and Dan Elliott's a hottie. He's over there cooling this track off. And we <laughs> waited, and then they kept delaying it, mm -hmm. and then we finally, at 1 o'clock in the morning, we get down to the grid, the like bottom the race, falls out. We're completely well. soaked. Mm -hmm. We get back to the trailer, and we were like, this was not a good day. No, it was that day. That was our that only probably, experience That was Peach probably State. the day that Peach State decided to shut the doors no. and Dan took over. So is Dan using the go-kart track or the big track beside it? I think everything's going to be involved. Oh, okay, good. I think everything's going to be involved, but it is yeah. going to be an interesting day. We're going to speed around the show today very, very fast because like we want to get Bush. In who like. should have won the Coca-Cola race because uh -huh. he led 170, maybe five uh -huh. laps or of like, the race. Or like little E, who will be winning now because guess who got fired? <laughs> His pit chief. His great chief is fired. He's done. Has He's out of there. nothing to do with little E's non-performance of yes, driving. It does. Yes, it does. No. Well, right now, we're going to perform a lot. There's a lot going on in our community. We have a lot to talk about. One of the things we want to talk about... we got to go fast. Can you tell we've had a lot of coffee today? <laughs> I've had no coffee today. But I can tell you, I came in this morning in a vehicle I'm not used to driving. Yes. And the reason I have on this color lipstick is because I left my pocketbook in my and other that vehicle. that color is good. That color is good if you're 16, but I'm not. <laughs> it's raisin. It's but fine. We have a lot going on we want to tell you about. One of the things that we've been talking about all week long is a barbecue on the 31st mm -hmm. at the Fannin Farmers Market. This yes. is to benefit our community meal in McKaysville. And that's so please, wonderful that they're doing that. Please go out and support this effort. Mm -hmm. Please buy a plate. Please yes. make a donation. And all the money stays in Fannin County. Yes. There's also a third annual women's conference sponsored by the Daughters of Faith. We are honored to have as our guests Dr. Brenda Robinson, Connie Herring, Grace Worship Dance Team, Moving Hearts and Worship, and you, June the 6th. That is next week, so we can talk about that next week. And a you is not a person, on. that's you. So you need to go. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Now we have, every week we give away a birthday cake. So if you haven't called and given us your birthday information, mm -hmm. please do because this week the cake is a celebration cake from one of my very favorite places, the Dairy Queen and Ella So funny, you can tell we're in a hurry because she's just a little, little, little. Well, we got a lot going on today. I'm telling you, last week, Dan Elliott, I know, we missed him. He we kept forgot. waiting. We were waiting. waiting and we were racing and we were waiting and he forgot. So not only women forget things. Well, he's probably things. as busy as you. He's busier than me. He makes me look like I'm taking a nap. So <laughs> forget it. Forget it. Today is going to be a good day with a lot of things going on and we want to encourage you. I am going. My trip has been routed. It's 267 miles. I'm going to Buford Pusser's home tomorrow. I'm so excited I could just about have a stroke. Okay. Walking tall. Blonde root moment. Who's that? Walking tall. Oh, really? Joe Don Baker. Absolutely. Weird. Wasn't he like a, a bad An icon. Person? An icon in I mean, the sheriff. No. Oh, I mean, mean, not bad, but I mean like yes. bad. Yes, yeah. yes. We are going to his home tomorrow, and then I'm going to be with Miss Loretta Lynn, and I'm so excited I could just about Are you scream. more excited about being with Loretta or the driver? Loretta. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't so excited. So excited. Or to be with the driver at Loretti. That's that's the key. That yeah. is going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. Mm -hmm. I have always been. How many in the posse is going? Just us. Just us. It's going to be a that's lot of fun. That's really nice. It is downtime. We're going to have a ball. Good. We're have a ball. Awesome. Fourth row seats. Now, that's this is what I want to tell y'all, y'all. This is a day trip. You can all do what I'm going to do tomorrow. We're going to mm -hmm. leave at 730 in the morning. 
drive up, go to Buford Pressers first, and then go to Loretta's. This is a day trip. Everybody can do it. How long is it going to take? How long is the drive? Four and a half hours. Okay. Four and so a half hours. Going to see Tori. The concert isn't until eight o'clock tomorrow night, so the timing is absolutely perfect. And if you want us to so route it for you, so you'll get to see a lot of good stuff. I will. We're going up yeah. 64, out 64, to Buford Pressers Town, and I think it's called Adamsville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then we're going up to Loretti, so great day. I'm excited, I'd now, say. Now, are y'all having lunch with her? And no, her no, the concert's Chris not until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. No, Chris, go do you proud every time. I know. <laughs> Here we, are. we don't do it nearly as good as somebody I know, we know. I know, I know. Well, we've got to go because no. we have lots of guests. Yes. So we're going to take a break and go to the community calendar, and we're going to bring the first guest on. I think we're going to be talking about grandparenting and what it's like to take um, the role as a mom versus grandmother when things happen in your family, mm -hmm. sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. So go to the community calendar, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be a grandmother. Oh, but first, let me tell you about a panic call my mama gave me yesterday. Okay, she told y'all she is now on Facebook, thanks to me. So I put her on Facebook, and then yesterday she calls me, and she says, do you realize that when you gave Keith Petty my phone number, you did it over Facebook? On and Facebook. I was like, yeah, <laughs> she and put I said it's my not like number on Facebook. I said it's not like you haven't announced it on the show like fourteen times. I mean, I you was know. ready to choke her. So my phone well, number is now off Facebook. If you were lucky enough to get it, you are one lucky person. <laughs> but that's why we not have the anymore. hotline now. That's right. Okay, right now let's go to the community calendar. Shine on the sun, shine walk with me, world. It's a skimpery do da day. Good morning, morning, hello sunshine, wake up, sleepy head, why'd we move that Bojangle clock so far away from the bed, just one more minute, that's why we moved it, one more hug or two, do you love waking up next to me as much as I love waking up next to you? You make the coffee, I'll make the bed. I'll fix your lunch and you fix mine. Now tell me the truth. Do these old shoes look funny? Honey, it's almost nine. Now you be careful, gotta go. I love you, have a beautiful day. And kiss the happiest girl in the whole USA. Skip a do doo thank you, Lord, for making him for me. And thank you for letting life turn out the way that I always thought it could be. There once was a time when I could not imagine how it would feel to say I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Shine on me, sun, shine, walk with me, well, it's a skip what he do all day. I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Shine on me, sun, shine, walk with me, well, it's a skip what he do all day. I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Shine on me, sun, shine, walk with me, world, it's a skip for the do day. Funny face, I love you. Funny face, I need you. My whole world's wrapped up in you. When the road I walk seems all uphill And the colors in my rainbow turn blue You kiss the tears away You smile at me and say Funny face, funny face, I love you Funny face, I love you. Funny face, I 
Welcome back. Okay, you heard music from one of my favorites, Miss yes. Donna Fargo. Yes. Love her, love her, love her. Yes. I am the happiest girl in the whole USA because my life is finally in place. Now, there have been some bumpy roads, and along that came some problems with children with drug addictions and yes. raising grandchildren yes. and helping raise grandchildren. Our oldest daughter, Jean, is raising two and yes. um, doing a great job of it. Now, you're joining us because you're in the same situation, aren't you? You bet, and it started about four years ago and uh, unfortunately my youngest son took a different road mm -hmm. but thank god the good lord put me in their lives and one thing led to another uh many tears i know the story um yeah. and uh, but i work at the health department and working there i just i came face to face with it i had had grandparents just crying at my you know at my desk and i thought gosh you know about a year, year and a half ago, this dream started to transpire, and one thing led to another, and it started with talking to uh, Mr. Parson, school superintendent, and he just greeted me with open arms because I was just going to go to each school with my story mm -hmm. that I wanted to start a support group. and. He invited me to a faculty meeting. It was wonderful because I had all the principals right there, and they were just absolutely just very receptive to this idea. And so one thing has led to another. My first meeting, I didn't have anyone. My second one, I had one. Mm -hmm. My third, I had six. They wanted to meet every week. I go, well, uh, but we are... Uh, well, I've started, I've opened an account at uh, Gilmer Bank. I have a, a tax employee ID. I'm just, you know, everything that I need to do. I'm hoping to get contributions because my, and I keep saying me and my, and I hate that eventually it'll be us, but um, I'd like to have some kind of a, um, Oh gosh, my mind went blank. Um, college fund there for a scholarship, for the, a scholarship right. for uh, these kids, and just give them uh, some kind of a giving these grandparents a support right. system also because no, we're not alone. And you I'm, found out you're not alone, didn't oh, you? Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. And it's as we sat there this last group. It was How many wrenching. members now? How many people were there? Well, I, I don't know. We're just starting this. Okay. And today, today, I have a meeting at United Community Bank at 1 o'clock. Okay. Please, everyone that's doing this. So, come. grandparents who've had to step in and play the role of mom or dad, yes. <clears throat> you want to have them involved in this? Absolutely. Now, wh where Absolutely. is the bank? Where is the meeting going to be? United Community Bank. Here in LJ. Here in LJ okay. right. at 1 o'clock. And... Um, can we give your phone number so if people need directions or want to ask more questions, can we do that? I have a cell number. They okay. can call me. It's, Be careful now. <laughs> okay. I know. What is it? It's 404-550-5503. 6414. 6414. Okay. And I am so, I mean, I am, my whole heart is into this because these children have brought, I don't have time to get old. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. I know that story. Yeah. They're in yeah. baseball, <coughs> football, cheerleading. Mm -hmm. I coach cheerleading. Now, Patrick's year. the cheerleader and Ashley's yes, the football player. Yes, okay. that's correct. That's <laughs> correct. I just have a question. Is it only for grandparents that have had to step into this not role? At all. Or can it be not at all. a, a sibling I, I, maybe? That's that the had title, to? but you would not believe the uh, um, caretakers that involve sisters, mm -hmm. um, so anyone cousins, who's had anyone. To step into that. Yes. Okay. And it's it's rough because like for my in my case, and I know I've spoke 
I'm speaking for many of them, they, there's no child support. Right. Right. I was going to say the hardest part for Jean has been financially. Oh, it's a Because what she struggle. pays for daycare for these two little girls that she literally rescued is, mm -hmm. is unbelievable. It would take the average person down, mm -hmm. but she just works more and, and tries to make it work. But right. the financial burden, because mm -hmm. it's not like the government says, if you take your grandchildren and raise them, we're going to pay you to do that. It's right. not going to happen. And, and they're not no. getting anything <coughs> from the parents. No. You no. know, Nothing. which I think Zero. is so wrong. Wrong. It is, so wrong. but that's it, it, that's another story. Yeah, that, uh, right. right. But, but the next thing is, can you imagine your life <gasps> had you not stepped up and done this? Oh my gosh, I can't. I mean, mm -hmm. this has been. Uh, I don't even know how to spell Alzheimer's. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't have time. Uh -huh. I have every breath I take is. It's a new life. It's mm -hmm. a new. Right now, I love my job. I know a lot of people don't say that. Thank God I have one, mm -hmm. but I see so much in that health department, and my heart is is in there. Mm -hmm. And the kids, I don't know. I'm just so happy right now, and mm -hmm. these kids make it. Bless you. Oh, geez. they make it for me, and uh, but they. Bless you. Excuse me. Now, how old are they right now? Ashley. Eight. So you were four when you came to leave a grandmother. Five. He was five. Okay. He was just five. And I was three. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hold Sit that mic up when you talk, Patrick. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, it's it's just a wonderful thing they're doing. Wonderful in school, and um, they love school. Uh, they. It's just a wonderful thing, and I think that uh, these parents, these grandparents, need to know that they will make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's terrifying. I can remember a couple that came in one day and the the grandfather was just almost in a rage mm -hmm. and it was so sad and I just like <coughs> you know, you just I just wanted to say it's it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the poor woman was between dealing with his anxieties, mm -hmm. her anxieties, the children's anxieties. Mm -hmm. Well, my God, this poor woman. Mm -hmm. And been there, mm -hmm. but... It, you know, it has to be a whole adjustment because I know mom thought she was through. She had raised her children. We were grown. And, and it really hurt me to see her now have to start over. But you know, she adjusted. But it, it and was went the best it. thing that ever happened to me. Right. It was but truly the best thing that ever adjustment. happened to me. I Mentally. can't even begin to tell you. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that last meeting, it was it was great because we actually networked. One grandparent had that the child now was uh, six. She had the child at nine months old, and. Um, she, the child had a lot of anger issues and she wasn't happy with the physicians. So I gave her my uh, doctor's name, Dr. Cheshire, and this other grandparent had another name. And so it was like we were taking down notes. And the, uh, another grandparent who was just starting this, her road, uh, started to ask the grandmother, well, how did you start? you know, this going well. I took notes, I recorded um, uh, conversations, mm -hmm. I documented everything, and all that went in her favor when she went to court. You know what I think God. the hardest day is? To make the decision to do it. Mm -hmm. To make the decision to do it, because you are like, how could I possibly do this to my child when you are not doing that to your child, you are doing it to save a child. Right. So I think that's the hardest decision. Well. You know, we we come in all shapes and sizes. Some are men, some are women, some are married, some are not. Some have the money, some don't. So, yes, there's a lot to weigh, mm -hmm. y y you know, where you're at with it. Um, because as a grandmother, and you know what I'm saying, we have unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And our heart is to have well, our children to begin with, mm -hmm. to, to do the right thing and be happy and be successful, and that doesn't happen all the time. And when it doesn't, well, we step in. <coughs> and yes, unfortunately, we are, you know, raising a second family, but 
it's 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 a it's a real hard question. You okay, know, do today, I do it or do I don't? <clears throat> today at one o'clock, United Community Bank here in United Illinois. Community. Mm -hmm. Let's give your phone number one more time. Four oh four. Okay. Five five zero. Okay. Six four one four. There you go. Be there. We're there for each other. Be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, right yes. now we're going to take a break and we're going to go to the weather. Today's weather is hot. It is muggy. It feels like it's 96 in the studio came today. Yesterday. Came yesterday. So, all of a sudden. Right now, let's go to the weather. When we come back, we're going to talk to an ETC employee. I think she likes racing. That's a good thing. Today's race day here yes. on ETC. We'll be racing Fun right back Friday, to see you in day. just a second. <laughs> My heart is like a house One day I let the Savior in There are many rooms Where we would visit now and then But then one day he saw that door I knew the day had come too soon I said, Jesus, I'm not ready for us to visit in that room. Cause that's a place in my heart where even I don't go. I have some things in Okay, it is racing day, and we are racing through the ETC yes. offices to see who are we going to get today. Well, we found Debbie Scott. You like racing, and you said you and your husband both watch racing. Yes. Racing is a big part of our life. Um, have you ever been to a live race? Have you ever been? I have not. Oh, oh you got I would to. love Addictive. it. Addictive. I would Addictive. love it. Where do I need to sit? You need to sit. I sit in the Dale Earnhardt stands, row 25. I can't be in the sun, so I'm in a shaded area right at the start-finish line. So the start-finish line. Got, I sit in the tri-oval tower, which is right across from the winner's circle. And you <laughs> so she can see Kyle Bush. Yes, yes, it's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Yes, you should it, go That was an us. exciting race oh, last week. Yes. Now, is racing one of the... Your husband, is that a common denominator? You both enjoy that? We do. We enjoy watching that. Oh, yes. What else do you do that you enjoy together? Um, we like to um, go riding in the mountains, mm -hmm. different you know, places. We uh, just we just basically get in the vehicle and, and just start driving. Well, we've started we don't really plan. That. And let me tell you something I learned, and people are going to think I'm a ditz. They're going to think that I have blonde roots. I didn't know about this cross up on Salona. Have you ever been up there? Oh, yes. Well, I went 
Sunday night, I think? Yes. Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. Yeah. Monday night. We, saw. we got up there at this beautiful cross with this great Bible verse mm -hmm. and this little bench where you can have chilling time. Those are the treasures that you want to share with people. And if you and your husband discover things like that out and about, do you talk to people about it and say you should go here and take a oh, ride? Yes. Because a lot of people, me included, there are so many things around us that I never see. It's you know? like when Charles and Charlene went to Cartersville Dam. Right. And they went all the way up. And right. She said, I've never been there. And it was just absolutely beautiful. And these are the kind of treasures. It doesn't cost anything. And, and usually you're out you driving. Spend together. And, yeah. and yeah. you'll just drive up on something. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So mm -hmm. it's the best. Yeah. And to share oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, we've started doing this thing called day trips. And, and I will take a day trip and then come back and talk to people about it. And I have gone as far as, like, tomorrow's trip will probably be the longest thing we do, and it's about 267 to 277 miles. But um, in that area, there's so much. We could go every weekend and never see it all. Mm -hmm. Now, do y'all like to camp? Um, we don't go camping. My idea, camping I think he's is afraid to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's afraid to take me because he says, you're, you're the hotel type. Yeah, me too. I'm with you, girl. Yeah. So, I like my comfort. It's like <laughs> when, when uh, my friend Mary and I took the motor home to Talladega for the last Talladega race. And we were like the little princesses at the track because every time we would come in from being out walking around and stuff, we'd get our wipes out and wash our feet and stuff. And, and then we're seeing all these people just walking around, you know, having a good old time and they're dirty. And some of them that were camping in tents, we Ooh. know did not shower for three days. And, and so we would come in and we were like, where are the baby wipes and the antiseptic? And, you know, we were washing. We're like, we're the princesses of the camping, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Now, what do you do at ETC? I work at Information Systems. Actually, I started, I've been there six years. Uh -huh. I started in customer service, and when you come into the main office, I was in the very back office, so I had interaction with customers, which was great, uh -huh. and met a lot of friends that way. And uh, then I went um, two years ago to Information Systems, worked with a uh, great gal, Cindy Watkins and mm -hmm. Jennifer Chastain. Mm -hmm. And might I say a happy birthday to Jennifer Chastain today. <laughs> happy birthday. She'll yeah. get me for that. <laughs> and uh, so I've been in there and I uh, just love it, really do love it. And it's such a family atmosphere at mm -hmm. ETC, it so is. that's the best. And do you have children? I do. I have a 28-year-old and a son and a stepson that you is know, actually great. I would love to have a 28-year-old. Oh, yeah. You're my new best friend. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. You're sweet. Um, Any grandchildren? grandchildren? <laughs> I have a stepson that is graduating tonight, actually. Oh, so wow. we're going to Griffin for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have a granddaughter uh, that's 14 and into cheerleading just loves it. Her name's Hannah, okay. and I have a grandson, Carson. He's five, and he just graduated pre-K, uh -huh. so in a wonderful daughter-in-law, Shannon, so I have a good family. Now, is it family time when y'all are sitting around watching racing? Because this child, we used to watch racing Saturday night, Sunday. Racing was our life, and she used to walk through the living room, and we would be sitting there glued to the TV, and she'd say, I can't believe y'all spend time doing that. Do your children like the same things you like? Um, pretty much, yeah. They because uh, he has jeeps and and you know all these four wheel drives, so they like to really go roughing mm -hmm. it right mm -hmm. in the mountains and mm -hmm. all that. Where I like the little more luxuries. Now, is your husband a local <laughs> but, boy? Um, no, he's from Thomaston, Georgia. Where did he that? get here? <laughs> His mother's originally from here. Okay. So he Where's he Thomaston? was bringing her up. South Georgia. South Georgia. Oh, South Georgia. Okay. Does his mama make South Georgia flat biscuits? She used to. <gasps> the hardest thing I ever learned to cook was a flat South Georgia biscuits. Those people don't make biscuits like we do. No, they do not, not make at biscuits all. like we do. <laughs> really? But I finally learned to do that. So, hmm, yeah. interesting. I now, like where, your biscuits, though. I love my biscuits. Where does he work? <laughs> he works at Ulma Packaging in Ballground, Georgia, and he travels a lot. He leaves Monday for Canada. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. So. Wow. But we, you, well, you don't have time to argue and things like no. that. You know, you, you just uh, well, you hey, enjoy your time together when he's home. And you so enjoy that's a good your time thing. When he's gone because <laughs> you can vacuum at three uh, in the morning. You can do the dishes anytime you want to. If you want to have uh, cornflakes sitting up in the middle of the yeah, bed, you can. You can. And then when he comes home, then it's all back to normal. Oh, yeah. So. You, get, you know, just yeah. settle back down. My kind of girl. My kind of girl. Well, now, where do y'all live? Uh, we actually live out Chatsworth Highway just a little bit uh, on Hancock Drive. It's actually in the city limits. It takes me probably two minutes to get to work. Wow. Oh, I love that. Job, yeah. I love that. Especially with the gas prices now. Oh, yes, yes definitely. Excellent. Now, are you going to go by Sunday and attend the Quentin Holloway? Yes, I get am. Together? Yes. It's 50 years now. It's going to be Sunday from 2 to 5 at Appalachian Community Bank, and we want to invite mm -hmm. everybody to come by and pat him on the back, give him a hug. 
and say, I'm so glad you're on the back of my phone book. You know, I <laughs> forgot to get his autograph on my phone book. Mm -hmm. You'll have to do You'll that. You'll have to do I that. Know. He is one awesome he's, man. He's wonderful. He we're going we're gonna to miss seeing him every day at, mm -hmm. at the office. But we he's do want to invite everybody to come by. Is it just going to be a reception, light refreshments? Mm -hmm. It's going to be light refreshments and just kind of drop in, drop out okay. uh, from two, I believe two to five, is it? Mm -hmm. yes, two, two to five, five at Appalachian Community yes. Bank here in LLJ. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage everybody to come. And please, um, no gifts, just come and hand him just a hug and fellowship yeah, and that's right yeah, that's absolutely right. it's going to be a great day yes well thank you for being here today oh, i've enjoyed it thank we you. have oh, raced absolutely. through this I interview say, yeah. you, you weren't even nervous when you got here oh, well. and uh, we did it we we raced through it about 135 miles an hour and now we're going to go back to the community calendar and when we come back you talk about racing you talk about winning you talk about engines you talk about knowing it all the only thing that concerns me about the man coming on is he thinks GM is going under. I'm driving a GM truck. I'm a little bit nervous about this. We're going to talk to Dan Elliott when we come back from the community calendar. Would you look at what came down the road today? Sure. 
as much as the tunes he played. I'm talking about my smoky mouth. Welcome back. Oh, I'm getting echo in my ear today. <laughs> that sounded funny. That sounded like I screamed at myself. <laughs> I like Dan Elliott. We, we just discovered that we have the same <laughs> opinion on an M&M's person. Dan Elliott likes Kyle, Kyle Busch's Bush. racing yes. techniques. You now, are a smart man. Yeah, I, I like... I don't know if I'm a smart, smart man, but I'm, I've seen his talent. <laughs> yes. And yes. make no mistake about it, he is very talented. Yes. And what he can do in a race car, yes. it was evident in the all-star race. That race would have not been what right. it was without mm -hmm. him in that. Right. They told him he couldn't pass on the outside, so he went up the middle. It don't matter, he gets the job he done. He does. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I will admit that. I can't believe I'm sitting here admitting I this, know. but he is an awesome, awesome driver. Kyle is. The thing I don't he like is. about him is that attitude. I'm sorry. Now, when your mm -hmm. brother Bill was winning, 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 do you know what people loved about him? Yeah. He was very humble. He was a good guy. Yeah. And good guys come out on the top of the fan list. All right, know? on the fan list, but on the list of winning mm -hmm. and losing, all right, is it more important, and I've seen it in all oh, yeah. types of sports, you know, most people who do exceedingly well and win at all costs, um, is that more important to winning? Is the ego and what you think you can do and how you portray yourself, is that important in how you turn out as far as the number of wins mm -hmm. and it also equates to football, basketball, no matter what you do. Right. Is that more important? Mm -hmm. Does I, that add to it? I, I think, think you should be a good guy. I, I think really though, do. So, and I'm going to defend Kyle here. So much of his maybe um, standoffishness or whatever is because when he does excellent and he wins, they boo him <laughs> because he's beat. Yeah. Yeah, but Junior. they booed Dale Earnhardt. You know, they they, 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 they booed Darrell Waltrip. They booed so, everybody at, at some know, point. You know, I mean, that's got to mentally affect you when you know you're driving well mm -hmm. and you get out and people are boo, boo, boo. Well, you know, I just kicked your tail. Yeah, but you can think about that all the way to the bank. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, but it's going to be yeah. hard on him, yeah. so he's going to stand off. Well, you didn't hear the story about when we went to Atlanta to meet Jeff Gordon. We were invited to a meet and greet. And, and we are, Dale Earnhardt was our life. I mean, we didn't know senior. anything but Dale Earnhardt Sr., right? He was our life. And our child grew up from five months old. That kid had been to every race anywhere and knew that Dale Earnhardt at our house was like the man. And so we got invited to go to Atlanta Motor Speedway to meet Jeff Gordon. And, and my husband said, well, you need to take something for him to autograph. And I said, I don't own anything, Jeff Gordon. <laughs> and we had this attitude about Jeff Gordon then, the same thing, because we were not Gordon fans. Well, my nine-year-old walks in, and I'm saying, son, we get to go meet Jeff Gordon. He looked at his daddy and said, daddy, you're not going to make me go meet that man, are you? And I said, that's bad that we instill that kind of feelings in a nine-year-old. But isn't it amazing the difference in personalities of Dale Earnhardt to Jeff Gordon? Yes. And yes. it's almost like you go from the, it, it's not the good old boy deal, but it is a personality that is more accessible than today where now that, you know, you go to the racetrack and you see a driver either run to the truck or run to the motor coach. Mm -hmm. it, and I know NASCAR portrays these drivers as accessible. They don't. But make no mistake about it, they are not they accessible. They are not accessible. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I used to have, I, I still have season tickets to Atlanta. I used to go to a lot of places and spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But you know what I quit doing? I quit doing it because if those dudes are not going to give back, and I'm the biggest giver backer oh. ever, yes. if you are not going to give back, you're not going to get it from me. I don't buy t-shirts anymore. <laughs> I don't buy hats anymore. I don't buy any of that stuff anymore. But it's the driver's attitudes that did that. They yeah, did that. They are not above it. Now, they are been, not about Have you been it. around Richard Petty very much? No, I have not, but I loved him. I, I, loved I know him. why they call him the king, and everybody that's ever been around him knows that story, too, because he will take all the time in the world to talk to you, uh -huh. to sign autographs, to answer your questions. Uh -huh. He is the best at what he does because he loves what he does. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, anybody that has an opportunity to be around Richard Petty, that he is the king for that reason uh -huh. because he is great to the fans. Yeah. He gives back. He got a lot from racing, but he has given back. Right. Yeah. And and that to me, those are the men that will be remembered in history. Absolutely. Because I don't care. I mean, I know Kyle Bush is a great driver, and I give you a hard time about him. I don't care about his driving. I care about that attitude. Because I truly know there are children like mine when Nick was nine years old. 
he wanted to feel that he knew Dale Earnhardt because for goodness sake, we spent our last vacation at DEI, seriously. My husband was buried in a DEI shirt, a white dress shirt, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. I mean, we were Dale Earnhardt fans, died, to, done, that was us, that was our life. And to know that a driver that we kind of, not actually idolized, but we really, really sort of did. did, we yeah. really did, yeah. that he, that my child could walk up and shake hands to him. Now, Nick mm -hmm. is over at Lanier Racing, and he sees a lot of the icons, and your brother being one of them, he was 20 feet from us at the track, and you know what Nick said? Mama, don't you dare go over there and talk to him. Don't you dare go over there and talk to him. He doesn't like people to talk to him. He doesn't like publicity. He doesn't like this. Is your brother really like that? No, but you go to the track, and, and you're there for the With same reasons exactly. that you're there racing. Right. And and the main focus is it, it's But Nick like, was very concerned about protecting Bill, and I thought that was cool. It is, but but I'm I know Bill, and I know that just like the autograph lines they did when Kyle Bush was at Lanier and when Bill was at Lanier, Kyle sat at the table, did autographs. Bill got up and walked the line at Lanier. Wow! It, it's a difference in the generations of what you grew up uh, grew up in and mm -hmm. how you established yourself. Right. And yeah. I think that's the biggest difference. Because you see that sign? When you get there, remember where, where you came, came from. from. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you get there, remember where you came from. Because, because make no mistake about it, once you get into your time, your time may be this sure. long, it that's may right. be this right. long. That's right. Make no mistake about it. There'll that's be right. a up and there'll be a down. That's right. There'll be lots of downs. That's yeah. right. That's what right. What goes up will come will down. Come oh down. yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well you have been doing something. You kind of I'm not going to say bit off more than you can chew, but, but you have a deadline, Dan, you have a terrible deadline, yeah. and we are really trying to get this done by November what? 13th, 14th, and 15th, okay. and, and I really have put a personal deadline on uh, actually on uh, September the 1st. We're I want to be done by September the 1st. And this is moving tons and tons of dirt. We're going to hold that up to the camera. All right, let's, let's hold another one up. Let's see if we can do this. We are going to get... This is the old Peach State track, mm -hmm. which Jefferson, is Georgia. Jefferson, Georgia. We mm -hmm. have raced it. We have been there, probably seen some of the best fights I ever saw mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I still compare this, this race track. This is the go-kart track, That's right? the go-kart yeah. yeah. track, That's and we uh -huh. it will, you'd asked that question a little while ago, will uh -huh. it reopen, and it will. Yeah. Okay. We'll bring the go-kart track back. Okay. We, we've had a lot of construction. We have moved mm -hmm. probably about yeah, 85,000 yards track. of dirt. Wow. I don't know if that equates to a lot of people, but it is a huge amount of dirt. Uh -huh. We've done it in a short amount of time. Uh, Simpson Trucking and Graydon got the contract bid on moving the dirt, and um, we were not going to pull the complete surface off the racetrack. We were going to just overlay it, cover over it, but the cracks were so bad that we had to go ahead and take up the asphalt. Oh, wow. I think I'm the first person so far that has run there on asphalt and so far now on dirt, and now when we put the asphalt surface back down, I will have run all three surfaces wow. because it was never dirt before it was asphalt. Uh -huh. And probably the only people ever ran around on it were the ones that helped build the track in somewhere in the mid-60s. Now, we were going to ask a trivia question about Brother Bill, mm -hmm. and we talked about it one time. There was a car he drove that was not a Ford because you guys are Ford people. Absolutely. You are Ford people, and, and you and I, we laugh because I'm kind of a GM girl, but I told you outside why. If it was up to me, I'd have had a King Ranch truck. It didn't happen. Um, and, and it is one of those things, loyalty, yeah, I'll never drive a Toyota. I mean, I'm just not a, I, and I love them. I mean, they're efficient, they, yeah. they look good, yeah. but you know, 44 years of driving GM products, I'm yeah. sorry, that's what I'm gonna drive. But your brother once upon a time drove something that wasn't a Ford. Do you think somebody out there in our audience might know that brand of car? If they're old enough, they will. If they're old <laughs> enough, they will. Well, we're gonna give away one of the Promise Quartet CDs. This is a brand new CD called The Storyteller from the mm -hmm. Promise Quartet. If you can call me, there was a race. We're not even going to narrow you down to was that. Was it just one race? One race. One oh race only. And then he said, get me back in the Ford. <laughs> now, this was driving a car that was the number nine car. Uh -huh. And that's important because he drove some races in another brand that was another number. Uh -huh. But this is a number nine race car. And um, it was only one race. And um, 
I'm not even going to give. I could tell you whose car. That, <laughs> well, that'll give it away. It, it was, yeah, it was loaned to us, but um, but uh, that was uh, only one of the races that I can ever remember. Okay. Not right. being the not uh -huh. being the Ford or Mercury brand, uh -huh. a okay. Ford product. Okay. But you know, you were talking about Dale Earnhardt, and you know the relationships. Everybody thought that Bill and Dale were um, rivals not arch enemies but didn't get along mm -hmm. you know i can remember a race at uh, rockingham where they had a pit crew competition to where that we only had one car at that race that's all we had was one car uh -huh. we didn't have a car to enter the pit crew competition with to do the competition for the pit crew so richard childress and dale earnhardt loaned us a race car that sounds See, like that could be a like. trivia question too because mm -hmm. that was the only time that we um, I changed front tires at that time and uh, actually did the pit stop using Dale's car and Bill was driving it. That's wow. how close the teams were because yeah. it, it is a close, close right. sport. So you've been a tire man? Mm -hmm. Isn't tires. that just incredibly stressful? Well, the first time we went to Talladega and you, you know, the cars at that time, they ran close to 200 when we first mm -hmm. went to Talladega. So um, we didn't qualify so well. This was early, early in our career. We didn't qualify so well, and we ended up pitting coming off of turn four, which at that time there was no speed limit on pit road. Mm -hmm. You could go down pit road as fast as you could use it for the racetrack. You could wow. go down as fast as you wanted to go. Oh, Lord. And so, first pit stop we make, and all these cars are passing us by going to the other end of pit road, and they're cooking. And I'm thinking, I can't wait to get to the other end where it won't be so bad where they drop yeah. off the bank and where we finally work our way over the next decade to the other end. And I forgot about the fact that the ones that leave pit road on the opposite end are running by, they're cooking yeah. faster than the ones dropping off the track. Wow. But the adrenaline rush that you get from doing that yeah. is unreal. Yeah. It, it's just unreal. And the people that's changing tires now will never know what it was like to be able to pit cars where they come in so fast Bill's come in and pitted and, and been suffice that he couldn't stop in his own pit. He just slid through oh, it. Oh, wow. And, and a lot of wow. teams were the same way. It was judging where your pit, where your pit stall was mm -hmm. and how quick you could get there and how quick you could get stopped. Mm -hmm. and, wow. And that was seconds, mm -hmm. and it made a difference. One second at Talladega is a football season. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, and see, oh, yeah. that is so funny because Nick will come off the track now and say, I need to do so-and-so to gain a tenth of a second. And I'm going... Huh? A huh? tenth of a second. <laughs> he said, Mom, you just don't realize. You I don't. really don't. I really don't. And what's it going to cost you? Oh, yeah, yeah. $850. <laughs> yeah, a tenth of a second. It's only money. Exactly. Um, Chad that I'm dating, he was a gas man on a pit mm. crew for a while. And uh, it was during the time when Dale Sr. was alive, and he said he got close to Dale Sr., but even him being on a pit crew, he didn't approach him, you yeah, know, but yeah. he was close to him. But he said, being the gas man is really hard because you've got to hold that big can. Yeah, did he tell you how much that weighs? He said close to 100 pounds. Yeah, you've got 11 gallons yeah. of fuel, wow. and yeah. that's about, and then the can, you've got about 90 pounds right. that you're trying to hold up, and match the probe there. on the car. Right. And then if the car leaves early, you got to make sure you pull that can out of that pull a probe there out. There have been some right. fires, haven't there? There have been some right. fires. We were doing a pit stop at Michigan and uh, Sterling Marlin was pitting in front of us and they dropped their fuel can after, as the car was leaving pit road. Wow. I was changing right side tire. Well, <gasps> all of a sudden, all this, whew, and you could feel the heat off of oh it. Oh my gosh. And I still got to run around and do the left side tire, which is, that's where the fire all ended up oh, being. No. And you just run around, you do the best you can. And it was just, the heat was intense. But the, but the fire people were there so quick, got it put out. But yeah. it's still, all this is, is so distractive to what you're doing. Right. And as we said, seconds mean all the right. difference in the world in what position you come out right. in. Well, Ronnie Lamanac from up in Fannin County knew yes. that he was driving an Oldsmobile. That's it. An Oldsmobile. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. Bill Elliott, the king of Ford, driving an Olds? Ask him, <laughs> ask him whose Oldsmobile that was. Okay, now, right. Ronnie, if you want to call back, uh, I'll take you and... Sonia to dinner. If you'll call back and tell me what <laughs> who's whose Oldsmobile was, was this? Whose mm -hmm. Oldsmobile was this? Um, racing is a very tight family, and until you've been there, you really don't understand. Um, don't. They do deeply care about each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can remember the day that Dale died. I I don't think anything, and I'm talking John Kennedy on. 
I don't think anything impacted America like that did because no. everywhere you looked were sad faces. And in NASCAR, we get a bad rap. We're, yeah, we're rednecks, and yeah, we love hanging out, and we love those engines, and there's nothing like the sound. There's nothing like there's the nothing. roar. There's nothing like it. You can't describe it. You can't explain it. I watched it on TV so long, and then when I went to a real race, it's and totally I sat different. there, oh, you talk about hooked. Yeah. It, it's almost like going to church, and, and you're going to touch on this, but are. it's almost like going to church and sitting on the back row and sitting on the front row. Exactly. Right. There is... Trust me, if you've never sat on the front row, you better go expecting to get something because uh -huh. something may rub off on you uh -huh. when you go sit on the front well, row. We are, we're going to ask, way. we've got some prayer requests today that I want to do right quick, and then we're going to talk about a church you go to. Myra Jenkins has called requesting prayer for Bobby Childers. Bobby's in the hospital. A dear, dear friend that we love, and she hangs out about everywhere I hang out. We also got a, a bad call this morning. Bill Sinyard's Aunt Aileen that we featured Monday morning has yeah. been diagnosed again with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. She will face surgery next week. Um, please, please put your, her on your prayer list. The piano list. one? The piano oh my player, gosh. yes. I hate she that. just got the diagnosis yesterday. Was it who? Who's, whose Osmobile was it? Benny Parsons. Benny Parsons. Mm -hmm. Benny Parsons. Yes, it was Benny Parsons. Well, we're going to talk about a church that you attend. This is not your average Baptist church. This is called Free Chapel over in Hall County. Yep. And Matt Dibler attends there. And the first time I walked in there, I, or the first time I went by there, I was going to Lanier to the racetrack, and I glanced over, and I said, what is that, a college? <laughs> it is a church. It's a college, all right. You're going to learn a lot. Yes, yes. Now, let's talk about the pastor there. Jensen Franklin. Okay, he's 46 or so years Mid -40s. old. 40s A young man mm -hmm. who has so much to give. You know, when we first, we went to Free Chapel before they built their new facility out there um, where they're located at now. Uh, they've been several places like most churches have. But, you know, we talked about this in the break is that he's like Dale Earnhardt. Either either people love him or they hate him, one or the uh -huh. other. They, uh -huh. they like him or they don't. Right. But it's like he says, you go there three times, if you're not hooked, go somewhere else. Right. Well, and, and I'm well telling Matt you, was hooked the first time. Matt was yeah. hooked the first time, and you told me the sermon that Matt the really Biff Sparrow, enjoyed. Yes. Biff Sparrow. And I was there for that sermon, and, and some of those sermons that you go into, you got to go wanting to get something out of it, but if you go and, and want to just get a little bit out of it, I think you'll leave pleased with what you've done and, and the choice that you made. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's like any other church. You go where you're fed, and you go to get motivated to do something. Right. It's not, it's just like he said on a sermon one day, he said, y'all come in here and he said, I speak and it's like, I'm looking at y'all and it's like, feed me, feed me, feed me. Well, somewhere you've got to get up, get off your rear and go do some stuff of your own because right. God didn't just put you on this earth to go to Free Chapel, any other church and sit there and just listen to the preacher and feel good because you went there or mm -hmm. got there on that Sunday and didn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. We're here for a reason, and that's to help people and to try to promote what God was trying to promote in the beginning. Right. And that's loving people and helping people and trying to be a good person. That's one of the things you and I have kind of connected on. Absolutely. I love doing gospel music. I love bringing a message through song. And when you had the opportunity to do this track, we decided we could incorporate mm -hmm. racing mm -hmm. and gospel singing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And another thing that I feel strong about is that uh, me and my wife have always talked about a race camp for kids. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe that that's part of the deal why I'm in this racetrack now. Mm -hmm. Because as far as I, I feel being involved with this racetrack was divine intervention mm -hmm. anyway. Because yeah, right. it came about in such a, a way that is beyond imagination and then I tried to talk the owners out of buying the place or, uh -huh. or having me there anyway. I asked them questions, I'm sitting there and, and this stuff's coming out of my mouth and I don't know where it's coming from <laughs> and it's like if I were them I'd fire me right there before I hired me. But it, it just goes with what God I think has a plan mm -hmm. and if you're obedient enough to to be patient enough to sit through a plan mm -hmm. because it may not look like it's going anywhere in the beginning, but trust me, mm -hmm. it'll get you to where you need to go if you're just patient and do what, what he asks you to do. Right. 
and knowing what he asked you to do is important for there, us. There were days in my early days here that I would say, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can handle this. I don't know if I can continue this right. because I've had some down times mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah. and I get emails every day yeah. and people say, you pump me up, mm -hmm. you make me happy, yeah. you make me smile. It is some days, and, and I, you know this, yeah. I've had days it was tough to smile yeah. because I had a lot of things yeah. going on. At the beginning of the year, something happened to me that was a blessing from God, and I understand it now. Yeah. But I didn't understand it then, and I said, if I don't do the very best that I can do, then maybe God will take that blessing away. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that everything that happens to you is for a reason. Now, Joel yeah. Osteen is like my guy. Yep. Joel Osteen is like, I, I love all the churches I visit. I love going to church. I love hearing Matt Dibler preach. I'd rather hear him preach than to eat pizza at Pete's King. But That says a lot. That says a lot. But um, I love positive messages. Absolutely. And, and I said, one of the things that get me through the day are things um, that Joel says. And, and every week I will listen and I will think he's been to my house again, you know. <laughs> He hits she home. swears he has a hidden camera in her house. Yeah, he hits home, and I think that's what we need. We all need a message that it's not just us. It's not just about us. It is not just for us. It is designed. There is a big plan. And when you and I walked up and started talking, we both looked at each other and said, there is a plan here. There's and we plan knew here. that. Mm -hmm. We knew that. But, you know, you can't always, I know it's nice to hear the feel-good sermons. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a good balance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely a good balance, and, and I listen. My round of, I love Free Chapel. I love to hear Jensen preach. I love to hear T.D. Jakes preach. Oh, yeah. I love to hear Joel Osteen preach. Um, I like to listen to Joyce Meyer. There's oh, my daughter went to a seminar with her. She came back, and she said, Mom, you just won't believe it. You just won't believe it. Yeah. She said, oh, and she was so pumped. Yeah. Now, I've never never been to any of her events, but, but they had a blast. Went over to Alabama to a Joel Osteen event they had over there, and it was awesome. But um, I'm, I'm telling you, it's about the balance of what you get and what speaks to your heart because we're all individuals. We all get something different out of each and every one. Mm -hmm. It's not important who you listen to, but you, you research who you listen to because you want to make doggone sure that you're getting fed the right word. Right. And the only way that you know that, and this <coughs> is the most important part, the only way that you know that is to know the Bible right. because you can be fed the wrong stuff. Right. And if you don't know your Bible or you don't go back and look up what the preacher talked about, you want to make sure that you've been fed the right word. That's right. That's right. Well, right now we're going to show some photos you brought today. Now, you have been working, 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 trying to get the track ready. Absolutely. It has been, we said you're a hottie. You're a hottie because you've been out there digging in the dirt. <laughs> You have really been, been a wet hottie out. because of all the rain, too. <laughs> you have been pumping it out. 85,000. We're going to hand the baby. 85, how many tons of dirt? 85,000 yards of dirt. This is, now, this is a planned fire, okay? This, uh -huh. is the, this is the old control tower that sat at the top of the bleachers that used to be there. Those bleachers are absolutely gone. Mm -hmm. Those were a, that was a dirt bank, dirt berm that they built when they built the track and put the concrete bleachers up that dirt berm and then that control tower is on top. Mm -hmm. This is from standing on the new bleachers that are being built now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was used bleachers that came from racetrack at Lakeland, Florida and we're putting those up. They'll be on the opposite side. We flip the racetrack or put the front straightaway on the back straightaway mm -hmm. to keep the sun out of your face because oh, wow. if you've well, been good. there before yeah. the side the bleachers were on, you, you kind of stared into the sun, mm -hmm. especially around sunset. That's the back side of the new bleachers. Uh, that'll be the new turn one, turn two from the bleachers. Lowered the infield about six and a half feet to where that with the transporters inside the track, you'll be able to see over the transporters and see all the track. Which oh, you couldn't awesome. Do that is awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. big difference. So what all what all um, different cars are going to race there? Okay, that's that's a good part. We've gotten yeah. into a lot of that. I've yeah. even um, talked to ARCA about a race, but I can't oh, afford it. Oh, that would be I, awesome. It would be awesome, but I can't afford an ARCA race. This is a <laughs> lot of the dirt work that they're doing in the infield. Uh, we're redoing the retaining walls around the outside and then the interior retaining walls. So it's um, going to be a whole new place. It's going to be a whole new place. Yeah. If you And the thing is, it is only an hour and 30 minutes from us. That yeah. is the coolest thing about yeah. it. it. It has a, this was the old two-story building that uh, sat out in front <laughs> of the And you facility. and I talked about that building, and you said you just couldn't get a vision couldn't for it. And then vision. one day, you knew the vision was tear that bad boy down. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the owners called and said, 
take it out. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I knew then why I couldn't get a vision for it. Uh -huh. God could not give me a vision for that thing. Now but let's talk the about the owners. They made it possible for you to fulfill and live a dream. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's Jim and Tony Gresham with me. We're uh, mm -hmm. uh, surveying how much money they've spent so far. And, and it is called Gresham Motorsports, Gresham Motorsports Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, the deal came about because in the facility we'll be, be able to do Legends, Bandoleros, Thunder Roadsters. Uh, we can do... It's a boy! It's, it's a, a boy and he will be racing someday. <laughs> Dan, look at what we got. He's, He's already precious. racing to the bottle now. This is baby Van Crow, Stephen Van Crow, and his dad is Clickett, who is one of my favorite ETC employees. Mm -hmm. Van, what you think about this sweet boy? Huh? Hey, Danny's right. got blue eyes like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think he's got Ford on his mind? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he's got uh, bankruptcy on his mind? <laughs> I don't know, Jim. <laughs> It is that, we're gonna that get a, is, we're gonna know, we're gonna get a close that, up of baby van. Look at Chad, is he not precious? Oh, Chad and Sarah, you done good, guys. You Absolutely. done good. Oh, he is a doll. Mm. How sweet. And Aunt Cherry just loves you to death. Mm -hmm. Oh my lordy me. Well, racing has always been a big part of my life. I was a drag racer when I was 16 years old. It was tough. Women were hated at the track. Do you see that changing now? It's already changed, but the but the thing I think I see the changes that to me are the worst is I can remember through the 70s and through the 80s, we would go to Talladega and there were two separate garage areas. There was one for what is now Nationwide. There was one now what is Cup. So after Nationwide ran their race on Saturday, which was the Bush race, then that garage area cleared out because those teams had competed and, and they were on the way home. That garage area would clear out. All the families would come in and lay a spread just like camp meeting, just like uh -huh. a bring a bring a dish, lay a spread down a table. It was probably several hundred feet long. All the families were in there together. Nobody cared who came and ate. Right. The food was there. If you were hungry, you ate. Over the years, that's what's changed the most is the fact that we've lost that and now most of the teams the the teams have their own cook chef whatever they'll bring and cook some for them themselves some of them have some foo-foo chef yeah they Ooh, do yeah. They, they will cook for themselves and just like the signs usually say on the truck team members only right you know it it used to be more to me of a family sport where you were more welcome no matter where you went to right. you could pretty much go to anybody's truck you could go talk to anybody, uh -huh. you knew most everybody there, it's different today. Well, mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that's going to be so cool about you, your track, drivers will be accessible. Drivers Absolutely. will be accessible, and I think that the thing, the spirit that you are taking to this location, it's going to be back to family time. I think you're going to have Our to. Our goal is family. I think you're going to have to because I've said for the last year and a half that that NASCAR as well as short track is going through a major transition. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do something to turn this around, because you know I've, I've I've researched over the last couple of months, why is dirt racing? And we need to do, we need to do a show on this to where that we have people call in and tell us why they'd rather go to a dirt track mm -hmm. or why they love dirt like racing DC Motor Speedway. more than asphalt because mm -hmm. asphalt has dropped off. Dirt has remained right. pretty strong. Yeah. Right. It's, it's your strongest form of racing yeah. right That's now. Right. So why is that? Yeah. Well, I think the family atmosphere. I think the hometown spirit. I think the family. I think rooting for guys that you can go talk to. And I'm telling yeah. you, I mean, it is a big deal. You know, we spend a fortune just on promotion products for Nick. Because if Nick Martin's name isn't out there on something, mm -hmm. people don't remember. That's exactly and, right. And and you want people to show up at the track in Nick Martin shirts, and that's yeah. a cool thing because you look around and you're like, okay, yeah. you, you know, want to see okay. it all around, no matter where yeah. you go, you yeah. want to see and, it all around. And you want to be accessible to those people because if they've spent twenty bucks on a shirt, hey, you want to speak to them, you want to say yeah. thank you for being there, thank you for supporting me, and I think that's one of the cool things. It will be family atmosphere at your place. It that is the whole design. And incorporating some gospel music, getting Brett Miller there to do some preaching for Carding I think Crusaders. That would be awesome. It is going to be awesome. We talked to Brett last night. He's in Kansas racing this week. But he is, he could have gone on to NASCAR and he chose to do what he does because of his ministry. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things when you and I first got together, it's important that there be a ministry involved in racing. Absolutely. 
and, and part of that being families. And, and if you're at the track, you know this, mm -hmm. you miss church because a lot of mornings we get through racing at 5 a.m. Right. Now it's tough <laughs> to get back home and get to church. So a lot yeah. of people just keep their motor homes at the track and spend the night. Yeah. So this way, you can have a Sunday morning service there. As I said before, whenever we first, you know, I, I think I said on the, on the program I was on about a month ago that uh, this racetrack, it did well for about two years, and then now for about 40 years, it's like Moses in the desert. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed to say that we have prayed over this track quite a bit, not for the success of the track or for the money that it's going to do, but for what it's going to do for the kingdom. Right. And, and that, that's that got to be your attitude. My, my dad, I fought with this for years and years on, you know, I, I was like everybody else. I thought about how do you make money? How do you make money? How do you make money? Okay, my dad always said, if you do things for the right reasons, mm -hmm. you will always make money. Well, and, and I see that every day. I mean, this is, this is economic times. If I laid out my financial statement for the trucking <laughs> business last year, yeah. you'd probably say, why didn't I go to the bargain barn and buy a gun and shoot myself? Right. But, but I Couldn't know, afford it. no, I know <laughs> there's a bigger picture. I know Couldn't there's a bigger the picture. To go in it. And I know that if you stay focused and you stay on the right level, things will turn around. They really will, and, and I have confidence. Even if they don't turn around, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, no matter what God has in store, no matter what comes down the pipe, it will be okay. It will be okay. Mm -hmm. It will be okay. And it's good too to have, because um, it's like no matter how you get them there, get them there. A lot of people are going to come just for the racing, but then that atmosphere is going to touch people Bring that it children. wouldn't normally touch just because they're going to come for one reason and then they're going to be gifted with another. Well, the thing about it you is, know? like I say, it's it's the deal of, of how can I use this for what God wants, the purpose that he put mm -hmm. me here for. Yeah. What can I use this mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. And I know he's got an answer to that, and yeah. he's not giving it to me yet, but mm -hmm. but he's got an answer mm -hmm. to that. That's and, where I, and I know he does. We have to learn right. patience, and it's like, That's Lord, it. give it to me now. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right yeah. now, we're going to take a break and go to the obituaries, and I'm going to tell you, this is the sweetest, most precious blue-eyed baby boy and Van, I see you in a race car someday, honey. Mm. Oh my Lord, have mercy! Are doing the We news. are going to go to the obituary. I see you right in here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we also have a sponsor for our weather, Spivey's Body Shop. Welcome on board again. We love yeah. them. They are located at 143 Sailors Drive. If you have a big uh, Angela Burgess wreck and you need a car fixed, call Spivey's Body Shop. We also are going to go to the Bargain Barn, Papa's Pizza, and Huff Drugs. So I let's think go. That's mm, the fact that it I love stay this. In. I love this baby. Let's go to the obits now. Welcome back. We are racing to, through today's show. Yes. Angela is going to race doing about 135 high banking into the birthday. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Kelly Bryson. With her birthday is May 28th, 44 years old. Happy birthday, Kelly. Happy, happy birthday. We have James W. Cole. Happy birthday on May 29th. 62 years young. Happy birthday, James. Marsha and Gerald Stanley. Uh, Marsha's going to be 51, and Gerald is going to be 53 on May 29th. Isn't 29. that funny? Married Same. couple. They How are cool married. Is that? that is cool. Make you one cake and save yourself some time. Dorothy, <laughs> Dorothy Dalrymple is going to be 81, 81. years young. Happy, happy May birthday. May 29th. Happy birthday. Dave Jordan was May 28th. Happy birthday, Dave. Tiffany Doors from your granny. Your granny says happy birthday, and that was May 27th. Kenneth Dye, which is May 30th, 41 years old. This is from your church family. Happy, happy birthday. And Jason, Jason Shinpaw, May 30th. He's going to be 32. I'll tell you about them shim He's paws. just a little <laughs> older than me. Yeah. they. Uh, one of the shim paws happened to run that Ducktown ETC office where I used to hang out a lot when I had time. Now, Dan, time is one of my things. I put something on my blog or on uh, Facebook last night. I made a blackberry cobbler last night and I made a peach cobbler. And I said, you'd think I was looking for a man. And then I laughed and said, and when would I have time for that? Right. Time is one of the biggest things. We yeah, are see, push, push, I believe push. in uh, a man. I'm, I'm a go-getter. My wife works, and I go yeah. get her. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's that could be your man. You could work, and he could go get he you. Go get me. That's so right. marry a go-getter, okay? <laughs> yeah, I will. You know, it. We we have to fit everything into our busy schedule. How did you possibly do this on the time frame? Because you have put yourself to the test. Yeah. Um. 
I told Bill the other day, Bill came over the track with Cindy, we were talking about some possible promotions and things we could get together on because, you know, I want to see, I would love to see the driver development program that he's doing come to that track because we're going to be, we're going to be different, we're going to be unique from any other racetrack anywhere in the southeast, I believe anywhere pretty much in the country because we're going to have six timing loops around the track. So if you come to test, I'll be able to break the test up to where I can give you your straightaway speeds, I can give you your corner speeds from the end of the straightaway to the center of the corner, the entry in, and I can give you center off both ends of the racetrack. This will allow you to make changes and know within a couple of laps whether the changes were better or worse. And you can't do that at any other racetrack because you can't break up the segments. I can also tell if you come with a crate motor, I'll probably be able to tell if your crate motor is legal or not. <gasps> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> and that was one of the things for putting the, putting the timing loops in was, how do you tell if people are soaking their tires? How do you tell if people are larger engines than everybody else's? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I should be able to tell by your straightaway speeds all the crate motors that GM does that I don't know what's going to happen. I know. He's, he's ragging me, y'all. Yeah, he's I'm a hard time. <laughs> but, but it's a scary deal because this program of crate motors, and it is a scary deal because so many teams, whether it's dirt, whether it's asphalt, the Pro Late Model Series, are relying on GM and the crate motors because so many racetracks have right. adopted the crate motors, and that's one that you go to the dealership and buy, right. and you're not allowed to do anything to. You put it in the car. Right. Everybody's supposed to be on the same level playing field, but you're not. But, right. but everybody's supposed to be on the same one. If you leave them alone, you are. But if GM does go bankrupt, how is this going to affect the crate motor program? Do you uh, think they will bankrupt? I'm afraid from all indication, but, but you know, yourself, Sherry, racing, that would be one of the programs that if they do restructure, if they go bankrupt, racing has got to be one of the first programs that they say, we, we may not be able to continue this. That would be yeah. scary. That and would and be it scary. would be scary. Yeah. But I, I have seen races where the first five places were Chevrolet products. The yeah. first five places. But, you know, for a long time, the crate motor was only GM. That was the only way. And then Ford got into the crate motor program a little bit later. Some racetracks will not even let any other engine compete. It's all right. Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's changed. The crate motor changed a lot. Now, that's where, to me, the difference is between dirt racing and asphalt and some of the things that we need to get into at, at a later show to mm -hmm. talk about a little bit more, break it down a little bit more. But I really feel like that the crate motor was supposed to come in and save you money in the beginning, but I think it's cost you money in mm -hmm. the long run. Well, we put a crate motor in the 67 Chevelle, or we got it ready to go. It's a, it's a good looking, great engine, mm -hmm. and it came straight GM. Straight so, GM. you know, straight GM. Now, if GM goes belly up and I've got mm -hmm. all this money tied up in that car, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, what happened? Let's talk about a car. We need to talk about this quickly because I hate this. We're running out of time. This ought to be a three hour show. Uh -huh. yep. Okay, Chase Elliott got his first win in Dawsonville on May the 11th. It was a great, great day. Chase is running number nine. Aaron's Lucky Dog Dream Machine reads, nobody beats Aaron's that night, nobody beat him. But I can say, my driver, my choice, my pick, Casey Roderick, I predict that Casey will be awesome. You know why he's awesome? Brother Bill is backing him, and Brother Bill has put him in that driver development program. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that Chase bumped Casey to get him out of the way to win the race. I know, I and know. Then, and then the first thing Bill did was make him go out and apologize to Casey for bumping him out of the way. Uh -huh. You know, it, it is racing in, in, your, in your driver development program, just as the Roush drivers, the Hendrick drivers, when it comes down to those last laps to the end of the race and you're racing for it's a checker It's all about play, a win. It's all about a win. Let's not get crazy. Let's not wreck everybody doing it. Yeah. But if you can if you can make the pies, if you're quicker, then that's the one that well, I want. We love Dale Earnhardt because, because at all odds he won. Yeah. He did what it took. I have seen him, and, and the night Nick was black flagged, and I, I'm still pouting about yeah. this. He was in second place rookie year, second place for the year. He was doing great. The points weekend was the next weekend. He would have gotten a second place trophy. Instead, he gets black flagged, and we get this little trophy about this big mm -hmm. that I've got about $1,000 in. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, you know, but he did, he came off the track and he said, Mom, I'm so sorry they black flagged me. And I looked at him and I said, I'm so proud of you. 
I said, way to go, kid. He finally got that See, she's end. Promoting, she's when, promoting that bad <laughs> attitude, no, isn't she? No, no, it, no, I, I saw it, him. and mm -hmm. it was not, not a black black he situation. did intentional. No, no, but but the thing about it is, no. it goes it back to that win. question I ask you, is is where do you draw the line? What do you want to do? Do you want to win races? Do you want the yes. fans to love you? I want yeah. to win a race. The, there's, <laughs> So, so if you want to be like Dale Senior, if you want to be like Kyle Bush, if you want to be like those drivers, yes, you better yes, expect yes. Darrell Waltrip. You better expect to be booed because they're not going to like the fact that number one, you're winning a lot of races. Oh, yeah. Number two, you're not from the good old boy southeastern uh -huh. area. Uh, you were either born with a silver spoon, exactly, tucked yes. somewhere we won't talk about, but yep, yep. but for whatever reasons, and you know that was the reason that Jeff Gordon wasn't liked so well when he came mm -hmm. into racing because supposedly, you know, it was a deal where he came in, everything had been handed to him. Right. He really didn't, as far as earning it. Pay his dues. Right. Then, then that was, that system was kind of Well, sideline. Nick being the new kid on the block, it was a tough race for him. It was a tough season mm -hmm. because some of the kids whose, actually their sisters were uh, scorekeepers. It was tough because that was the kid that Nick bumped to get out and to yeah. take the lead. He, he actually yeah. bumped nine cars and took the lead and it was great. Yeah. And I loved it. And he, But Nick has this little bit of a, he, he wants everybody to be happy, and I said, "Hey, big boy, with what we got tied up here, you are here to win. You are not here to make people smile." That's what I tell Chad because my boyfriend and his brother race in the same. They race limited go karts, and you know, Chad sometimes will be behind Dwayne and could get around him if he just bumped him slightly, but he won't. And I'm like, Chad, I know we come together, we all pit together, and that's your brother, and I know you love him. But when it's racing, one man wins. <laughs> one man gets a win, you know. And We're bad, aren't we? Yeah, and, this is, I can see where this is going. And I like Dwayne. He's a great guy, you know. We, we pit together, but I'm like, Chad. Dwayne, she's talked about you. She don't like you. She wants, she wants him to get, get run over you. I mean, you know, Chad is my boyfriend, so I've got to root for the one I pit for. I do, you know, I help him and stuff, and I'm like, Bump him out of the way. Let's go. <laughs> it is about a win. It is, but you don't want to. You don't want to hurt anybody. You know that. He doesn't, thing. and it is his brother. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's hard to race with your brother like that. Would be that. But egos. When it gets down to oh, egos, yeah. and and you know to to have that winning attitude, to have that winning edge. I honestly believe you've got to have a big one. You've got to yeah. believe in yourself. You've you you got yeah. to know that you can do it. You do. You've got yeah. to be able to make the right moves at the right time and. You know, well, the, the difference in it is is if you can do it and get away with it. And that's what Are you going to change Dale the go kart track there? Probably make it a little bit smaller. This this go kart yeah. track. Chad was, was not happy with that go kart no, track this, at all. No, this this go kart track. If anybody has been there and run on this, that's an a extremely bunch. fast yes, go kart it track. Yes, it is dangerous. And yes, besides that, we've run out of dirt everywhere else. And they were up in the go kart track yesterday getting dirt. Yeah. So the size of the go kart track will be a little bit smaller. Oh, but well, that's but good. trust me, it'll be more fun, and I think it'll mm -hmm. be safer. Okay. Will and it be open this year? Hopefully it'll be open sometime about the same time the track does, okay. November or December. If not, it'll be spring. And then down the back straightaway the, where the grandstands were mm -hmm. previous, yeah. um, hopefully next year by 2010 we've got eight-mile drag strip. Oh, that'll be awesome. Wow. We want the kids that'll to come awesome. play. If they run too quick on the drag strip, they're going to Commerce. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to yeah. make it a safe facility mm -hmm. where you can come play have a good time, right. and in a safe environment. Now, as far as the, we weren't happy either with the pitting for the go-kart, I mean, because everything was just so, and it, you know, it was just weird. Mm -hmm. There was no easy way to get down to the grid. A whole lot different now. Good. That's great. A whole lot different we now. we just didn't like it at all. And once again, it's Gresham Motorsports. Gresham Motorsports Park. Mm -hmm. Is there a website yet? People can look and kind of watch your progress? www.greshammotorsportspark.com. Okay. Cool. And you will be on once a month. Once, once a, a month, month, you will get yes. here racing. Like if it, look at her If, I don't, if I don't get pneumonia again, I'll be on once yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah. Please come on Fridays. That's my day. Yeah. Friday yeah. will be the best yeah. day to come. Um, you know, I don't know how much time we've got, but but the GM deal, I'm, I'm telling you, I feel for these people not knowing what their future is going to be. Right. Whether you've Scary. retired, whether you're still working, it. I, I feel for everybody because I, I've been hurt by all of the economy. Also, it, there's not anybody that I've talked to that is not affected in right, some way, right. shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I feel for these people. I feel for the people that's already retired. And the uncertainty of whether what the automobile industry will be if they do bankrupt and mm -hmm. Chrysler bankrupts, 
what is going to be left. It's scary. It is it is totally scary. Yeah. And California going bankrupt mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about what they're doing wow, with California. Out there. <laughs> and I've, I've heard also how that um, if these car dealerships, companies, GM bankrupts, that the price of the other cars that are left are going to go, woo. Well, you know, fuel is. It's already mm -hmm. on the way up. We're, we're facing, we're really going to have to pray hard for the leadership of the country. Yes. For, for everybody involved, we're, we're supposed to do that anyway, but, but we need to pray hard about because I'm telling you, based on what I truly believe and what I keep reading, and the newspaper, I don't know if you watch Hal Lindsey any, or if Love you it. watch, um, let's see, there's, there's so John Hagee. I'm telling you, we're getting close to, I don't believe I'm like John the Baptist mm -hmm. either. I may get my head lobbed <laughs> off, but I'm telling you, we can't be far off. No. This, these events of what the Bible says are coming quickly. They are. Yeah. Well, right now, we have to quickly go to Rich yeah. Scott. We're going to speed over there. I'm running about 160, and I'm not <laughs> banking on that coming through. The I'm about 190. <laughs> oh, no. Danielle, it just whooped me. Rich, what's going on? I'll tell you, we're so fast here. i got lots to tell you about on this final day of the week on ETC 3 Trading Time. Lots of new bargains. For instance, a three-piece lane sectional at a great price. Got a two-bedroom, one-bath house for sale in Copper Hill to tell you about. Need a bulldozer? Got one of those. A couple of new ATVs on our list. An adorable child Labrador puppy mix and a parrot looking for a new home. Plus, we'll have the list of all the local yard sales to tell you about this weekend. We invite you to join us during our live show at 11 each weekday morning or watch our encore presentations at 5.30 p.m. and 12 midnight. Call in during the live show. List your items for sale on trading time. Or you can shop online anytime at our website, www.northganow.com slash trading time. It's the only way to find what you're looking for in the North Georgia Mountains and the Copper Basin. We'll be looking for you a little later on this morning, right here on ETC3. Now back to Sherry Martin, Zoom, and North Georgia Now Today. One more quick, quick birthday. You got a quick we birthday. We have got on May 28th, Nancy Rhodes. Happy okay. birthday, Nancy. Follow that lady up, put her in there. We're going to make Dan Elliott drunk. Yes. We're going to stir them all up. And remember, your cake today comes from the Chilibration, the Chilibration cake from the Dairy Queen here in LJ, where and they the make. And the lucky winner is getting Dan Elliott to draw it. To draw. Yeah, and they make perfect, perfect Sherry Martin blizzard. Yeah, but the sad part is, is there's only one winner. Miss Flora Hefner, happy, happy birthday to you, Yay. and you will receive a cake. She is from LJ because she has a two seven six exchange. Happy birthday. Well, you know, yeah. happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Please, please have a great, great weekend. I will be at Damascus on the 31st for the Barker Brothers concert. Please come and join us. Um, there will be another group there too, the Kaylers, different Kaylor group. But I will be there. Um, it is going to be my day to chill with Miss Loretta Lynn tomorrow I'm and so Buford excited. Passer. I'm going to Buford Passer's house. I'm so excited. I could just nearly holler. I wish I could go with you and help you move dirt. Walk and smile. Walk and smile. I'll be at the yeah. go kart track cheering for Chad to bump Dwayne out of the way. That's right. That's we, need right. To, we need to get you to bring dirt because we've run out of dirt. <laughs> we've moved everything around that we can and we're probably going to have to borrow dirt from oh, wow. somebody else. Wow. We've wow. run out. Well, you'll be on once a month and we once will talk racing. It is, it is racing time. We love we love the family atmosphere there. And that is what we are promoting every single day. Go Kyle Bush. Go Kyle oh, Bush. No. Go Kyle Bush. I said it because I'm so disgusted with Hendrix. Go Little E scream. because I truly believe that the new it's crew chief change. is going to change. It's going to change. I will change. Little E, we're on our way back up, sunshine. Yep. I can't wait. I can't wait. It couldn't hurt because they've waited way too long. They've waited way, way too long. long. I should have wow. fired that boy months ago. Wow. That's what Rick Hendricks is sitting there saying. He yeah. is, he is. Yeah. But, you know, it is all about weekends with your family. Find something great to do. Do a day trip like I'm doing. Do something close to home. But please, please, once again, I beg you, support your local businesses. Yeah. Please, let's keep these folks working so we can continue working. From North Georgia Now Today, yeah. I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Angela Burgess. This is Dan, Dan Elliott. Elliott. And we will be with you again only on ETC3, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., 12.30 to 2 for you ah. Facebook guys. Hey, everybody on Facebook, you be here and we'll be here too, only on ETC3.